First of all, as we talk, we're not sure what's going on. Do you have any information about whether, in fact, a deal has come forth? There's reporting they are close to one. Well, thanks, David. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. I, I am not aware of an actual deal. All I know is what I see in the open source, but I do remain optimistic that they will, in fact, reach a deal sometime today. So there's a lot of speculation about what that deal may look like. Uh, and at one point, they were talking about 20 million barrels a day, reduction in production. At one, at one point, somebody said they needed 27 million. But now reports are it might be as low as 10 million barrels a day. Will that be enough as you look at the global energy market? I think any number above zero is going to be a good number for the market and for the uh, for the world economies. The oil, the oil today currently has no place to go. Uh, as you know, David, when you're producing oil, you usually have uh, but two options. You can either use it or you can store it. And in the case that we face today with the reduced demand uh, as a, as a, as a you know, product or result of the pandemic, you can't use it. There's simply no demand for the gasoline. There's no demand for the crude. So you're left with storage options, and that's running out very, very fast. So whether they reach a deal today or not, uh, I think the fact of the matter is, is that we're going to see some reductions uh, coming from companies who produce oil all around the world. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, President Trump has been very direct in saying that uh, if the oil price is too low, it can damage the U.S. energy industry. What kind of damage are we seeing right now? What kind of price do we need to protect the U.S. energy industry? Well, we're seeing we're seeing reductions all across the world, but we're also seeing them uh, very specifically here within the geographic uh, boundaries of the United States. So, you know, the latest numbers that I have before me show the rig count down about 108 rigs over the course of the last two years. It may be, I mean, two weeks, I'm sorry. It may be a little higher than that today. This is data that's probably two or three days old. But we're seeing that. We have saw the, uh, the major announcements by uh, corporations all throughout the country, uh, roughly 30 percent or so down in uh, capital expenditures. That's about $24 billion dollars pretty significant reduction over last year. And what that means is that you're going to see, you know, decreased production until the remainder of 2020. Our own EIA puts that number at somewhere around 1.6, 1.7 million barrels per day. And that could easily turn into 2 million barrels per day by the end of the year. So we're seeing it, uh, we're seeing the production numbers decline here, at least in the short term in the United States. And unfortunately, that's going to mean, you know, some layoffs and potentially some uh, reduction in employment as well. Uh, we are waiting for an agreement uh, between Saudi Arabia and Russia, really, as a practical matter. But what tools do we have in our toolkit in the United States? And one of the things that has been suggested, maybe requested by places like Russia, is that the United States curtail its production as well. Is that something that could be on the table? Well, we're, we've already done that. Uh, you know, th there is no mechanism in the United States that I'm aware of anyway uh, where the government mandates a, a, either a production number, an increase or a decrease, or certainly not uh, some price point that is mandated by the government either. The, the beautiful thing about the American marketplace is that it adjusts almost immediately to a demand curve. If there's no demand, you'll have no production. And we've seen that over the course of the last few weeks. Uh, with this pandemic. So, you know, there, there aren't many tools available, you know, from a, a federal government standpoint to have outcomes with regard to production. Now, that being said, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, you have two options. One of those options is storage, and the president has directed me to make available space in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve uh, to the industry, and that's what we're doing. We have approximately 77 million barrels of space there down in Louisiana and Texas, and we're making that available to the industry for storage purposes. So, so are, you, are you continuing to buy for the Strategic Petroleum Reserve? Could you buy more and buy faster? You know, we're authorized uh, by federal law to uh, store up to one billion barrels in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. So I'm going to be working with Congress to see if there's interest in expanding the current capabilities of the reserve itself. I hope that they find interest in doing that. I think it's important for us to do that, as the president has pointed out. Uh, you know, the government has a, you know, horrible history, if you will, of buying high and selling low. And, uh, you know, as a former businessman, as a former CEO, uh, the president knows full well that that is backwards. And we're making every effort that we can we can make to take advantage of, you know, the situation that we have today. We're trying to make lemons out of uh, lemonade out of lemons, I should say, 
uh, given the situation that we have. But, you know, we're going to move as aggressively as we can to make this storage available. Uh, the G20 energy ministers are going to be having a, a call, at least together, as I understand it, on Friday. You'll be participating, I believe. What do you expect or hope to come out of that? Well, you know, what we're going to be talking about in the G20 is, uh, one, the, you know, the economies of our respective countries. What are we doing uh, to stabilize not only the oil markets within uh, our respective economies, but what are we going to do to rebuild our economies? you know, once we get on the other side of this pandemic. There's a lot of interest in doing that. So you'll hear a lot of conversations about what's happened in our energy space. And importantly, because energy underpins so much of the world economy and so much of the individual economies of the members of the G20, what are we doing in our respective boundaries to ensure that this industry survives this pandem pandemic and comes out of the other side as strong as it was when we, when we were in the pre-pandemic phase? In addition to the G20, however, we're also going to be talking uh, to ministers. I'm going to meet later today, as a matter of fact, with my colleagues both in Mexico and Canada uh, to have a trilateral, trilateral uh, conversation about what we're going to do here in North America and uh, what is it that we can do uh, as part of the USMCA, as part of other agreements that are already on the books to ensure that our uh, energy industry remains as strong and interconnected as it is today. Uh, as we've said, Russia is part of the issue here as they've increased production in this price war with Saudi Arabia. One of the issues on the table are the sanctions we have against Russia, as I understand it, particularly involving that Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Is that on the table? Would we consider making some concessions there in order to get the Russians to curtail their production? Well, sanctions fall under the uh, purview of the Treasury Department and the State Department, so I don't want to speak for my colleagues, uh, you know, Secretary Mnuchin or Secretary Pompeo. But I can tell you they've not been a part of the conversations that I've had with uh, my colleagues in Russia, Mr. Novak, as well as um, Prince Abdulaziz, the energy minister in Saudi Arabia. Those types of conversations have not come up in the dialogue that we've been having nearly every day for the last two weeks. And finally, Mr. Secretary, um, uh, one of the things that President Trump has indicated a willingness to use is tariffs in various situations. Is that a possibility? Is that on the table? If we can't get out of the OPEC plus agreement what we need, might the U.S. impose tariffs on oil? Well, I think the president has been very clear that he will, he will use whatever tool is available to him to address the situation at hand. You know, and as, as we have uh, discussed in the past, as others have opined in the past, to the extent that any player uh, wants to take predatory advantage of the U.S. market, uh, the president will use the tools available to him as president of the United States, and he will act uh, appropriately and in accordance with the actions that we see in the marketplace. So he's taking nothing off the table. But, uh, you know, at the same time, he's, no, he's made no commitment to impose tariffs on anyone either. That sounds like it's possible but not imminent. Uh, that would be one way to characterize it, Dave.